And we are starting a new series. A little bit of wisdom goes a long way. How many want to be wise? Just a couple of you. I didn't say wise guys. I didn't say who wants to be a wise guy. I said who, who wants to be wise? Uh, how many, there's been times in your life when you needed wisdom in a situation or circumstance. And, and um, God wants us to have his wisdom and to walk in the wisdom of the Lord. And, and so we're, um, uh, we're going to talk, we're just going to spend the next few weeks in the book of Proverbs. Um, Proverbs, uh, obviously, Proverbs, there's 31 chapters. Uh, some people, um, how, many, how many read pro, uh, chapter of Proverbs every day? That's kind of, you, you, you do that. Okay. So if, if um, uh, so the idea is there's 31, so it works for a month of, of 31 days. And so you read a, a book of Proverbs every day. And, and, and let me just say this. How many know the word of God never gets old? So you can read, how many ever read and read and read and read, and there's scriptures you've read a hundred times, and then you read it one day and you, get, you see something that you've never seen. Um, I, I kind of get a picture of like the angels, those, those angelic beings that are around the throne. And the Bible says they, they cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And they, say, they, they, they declare that all the time, 24-7. And, and, I, and, and, and I'm convinced it's because even in his presence, 24-7, they are still wowed by him. There are things that they see about him that they've never seen before. And, 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 and so it is when we read scripture. And so we're going to dive in, uh, you know, obviously in just a few weeks, we, we don't have, we can't go through all of Proverbs, but, but we're going to get the, our, our feet wet a little bit. So today we're going to talk about what is uh, the, the, beginning, the beginning of wisdom. And so here's some, some obviously some, some uh, places you can turn to is Proverbs. That's a good start. So Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1 is where we're going to start. So you can turn to Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, we're going to go to Psalms as well. Psalms um, 85. We're going to a lot of places in Proverbs. So um, if you'll just start in Proverbs 1. And then we'll go to, go to Psalms as well. Psalms um, 85. A couple places in Psalms as well. Acts chapter 9. We'll go into the New Testament. Acts chapter 9. 1 John chapter 4 as well. And... Um, and we're even going to go into Revelation. I know, I know. Um, um, don't worry. We're not going to go in the scary part, okay? Uh, we're, we're just going to go in and get out. Um, <laughs> let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And, um, God, we, we do know that wisdom is available to us. Your word said that if any of us lack wisdom, we're to ask and you give it to us all liberally. And so, so Father, we just pray today that you, you give us a little bit of wisdom. Um, you... you you make a deposit in us as, as we sit at your feet and we desire to, to be taught of you. God, your word will change us. It will transform us and it will transform the world around us as it changes us. And so, Father, we, we give you permission to speak. I give you permission to speak. And, Father, I pray that everyone in this place gives you permission to speak into, into their lives and that their hearts are open to receive what you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. The beginning of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. So we're going to jump into this book, this wisdom book. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to talk about what's the beginning. What's the beginning of wisdom? Uh, how many know that if, if you don't get the beginning, you can't get the end, right? How, how, how many know what I'm talking about? It, there, there's, if there's a start to something, you got to get the start down. You got to get the beginning down. Um, how many know that um, when, when I, I was never a runner, um, in school. In fact, I struggled with any sport that didn't involve a ball of some sort. I, I didn't really get into the whole just running thing. Um, and, and so um, I, I, was never, I was never in track. I never did any of that, not just because I wasn't interested, but because I was slow. And so um, anyway, how many know that there's some really fast people out there, but if they don't learn how to start, right? There are people that might be slower than them, but, but sometimes gold medals are decided at the starting line, right? And so how many's ever seen a guy get disqualified because he got the start wrong? I mean, he works his whole life to get to the Olympics and he false starts, the, you know, you, you get disqualified if you false start the second time. And, and I've seen guys like crying, people crying because they didn't get the start right. And so it's the same way with wisdom. If we don't get the start right, we don't, we don't get wisdom. And so we're going to talk about what is the beginning of wisdom today. So in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, 
Proverbs chapter one, verse one. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and the riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. How many, we, we, I, I, I said, how many want to be wise? I, I would hope if I said, how many want to be a fool? None of us would raise our hands, right? We don't want to be, a, we don't want to be foolish. We, we want to be wise, there's a lot of times in lives where we have decisions that, that we need to make, and how many's ever made foolish decisions? Um, uh, how many's ever done something? You went a direction that was uh, after you after you did it, you found out that wasn't the direction God had for you. And and I, okay, let me just say this: How many's had an open door and you thought it was God, only to find out later it was not? Yeah, I, I've always said that sometimes faith is is believing God even when the door's not open. It's not, it's not, an open door is not always God. I, 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 my, my life experience is, is, um, is a testimony of the fact that I've walked through some open doors that were, that were uh, opened by someone else, and, and I regretted it. It's important for us to understand and be led by the wisdom of God, and, and so um, let's, let's look at Proverbs. Just, just the book of Proverbs, there's a purpose for this book. There's a, there's a purpose, and it's laid out in the beginning. The purpose of Proverbs is to help us. It's to help us know wisdom and instruction. So if I want to know wisdom and instruction, not that I can't find it elsewhere because God's word is full of wisdom, but if I, if I want the wisdom of God, then I have to go to this book. You see that? The, the purpose of this book is to help us. It's to help us um, get wisdom. It's to help us get understanding and instruction. It's to, it's to help us to perceive the words of understanding. It's, it's, it's to help the eye, the, for our eyes to be open. How many of you ever taken math in school and you just didn't get it? You, there were things you didn't get. And, and, and um, in fact, um, you're well up in years and you still don't get it. There's still, and, 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 you know, your kids come home with the, what, the, the new math. Then you're like, I never got the old math. I just, I'm like, um, it's so, um, we, we, there are times when we struggle. I remember one time I was, I was working with my brother-in-law and, um, I, I was, I was doing roofing sales. I was a roofing salesman and, um, and, and, and I would get up on those roofs with him and, and he would teach me, he would try to teach me how to measure a roof. And so I got the squares down. I got the rectangles and the squares, but I struggled with like the, the triangles and the cutouts. I struggled with that. And, and he's like, it's just geometry. And I was good in math and I didn't get it. And I, did, I just didn't get it. And, and he would every time, okay, what, what, this is like a zipper. We called it a zipper. And he would try to explain to me, this is how you measure this. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't see it. I, I, I can't see it. And he's like, the light's going to go off one day. It's going to go off one day. And it did. The light finally went off one day. It finally went off. And, and, and so, it, so it is a lot of times with concepts, with, with concepts, is sometimes we don't get it, and then we get it. It's like a light goes off. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is to help us, is to help us uh, 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 it, 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 to perceive things and to see things that we might not see normally. How many, how many see things going on in the world today? And uh, uh, Jeff Morrison spoke at the men's thing yesterday and he said, uh, 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 he said, um, he was talking about how we perceive people. And he goes, do you perceive people, those, all those people around you, do you perceive them as, and he kind of paused there, and I just interjected something that I think some of you would interject in that. Uh, um, do you perceive people uh, in the world um, as a bunch of idiots? How many's been there? <laughs> okay, and you're thinking, that's very prideful, Pastor. I can't believe you just said that. You said the I word in church. I'm, um, it, it, here's, the point I, here's, the, here's the point I want. There are, time, there are things going on in the world that, it leaves, does it leave you scratching your head like, what, what are you thinking? How many's watched any political stuff going on right now and you're like, are you kidding me? 
What? I mean, he's watched any, not the, I, I've watched some, I've, I was going to say highlights. I don't know if it's highlights, lowlights, uh, I guess, of the confirmation hearing. And it's embarrassing that these are adults. Yes. Isn't it crazy? Yes. And it's just like, it's just nuts. Well, um, the, the book of Proverbs is to help us see things that, that perhaps those that are, are not spiritually um, um, filled with the Spirit of God, they can't see it. How many know there are people that are spiritually blind? And you think there is no way people can be that out there and that clueless. Let me just say this. It's possible. It's possible. There are people that have no clue that they're as blind as they are. How many know that a lot of people, let me just, how many know, have you ever seen someone who has something stuck between their teeth? They have no clue it's stuck, or a booger hanging out their nose, right? They have no idea because they can't see it, right? Their, their perspective, they can't see it with their eyes, but you can see it. You can see it very well. So it is a lot of times when it comes to the world around us, there are things that God wants us to see that those that are outside the household of faith, they cannot see it. They cannot, it doesn't make us special. It just, it just means that we're a follower of God and God wants to reveal things to his people. Did you know that God wants you in on what he's doing? God's okay with you letting you know what's going on. How many has ever, ever considered or wondered what in the world is going on? Did you know that God will show you what's going on? So, um, um, so also Proverbs is to help us to receive instruction of wisdom, justice. I mean, no, it's, it's important to, to understand justice in our world. What is, what is right? What's wrong? What, what is justice? What is, what is um, uh, also instruction in judgment and equity, fairness, to give prudence to the simple. That, that word prudence, extreme acuteness or shrewdness, skillful in wisdom, to make those who are simple, those who that the world looks at and says that they are uneducated or foolish, that the book of Proverbs, it, the book of Proverbs is to help them have acute, acute, a, 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 acute ability and skillful in all wisdom. That's what, that's what it's for. How many think it's important if we're, if we're going for the wisdom of the Lord to get in the word of God, especially the book of Proverbs? It's also to help, it's also to help the young man um, um, to obtain knowledge and discretion. Discretion is the ability to see and understand. It's, it's the ability to weigh options and know which one's the right one. How many, need, how many know we need discretion in the world? There's a lot of... I, how many watch the news and you don't even know who to believe? You're like, well, uh, I'm, watching, I'm watching Fox News and they don't say the same thing as CNN and, um, you know, CNN's of the devil. Um, no, <laughs> we, we, how to, we don't even know, I don't even know who to believe sometimes. How many see stuff post on Facebook and then you, you share it? And then somebody, one of your friends says, not true. It's not true. Didn't do your Snopes. Didn't, didn't check it out. It's not true. There's a lot of disinformation. Let me just, we call it disinformation. There's a lot of deception and lies. That's what the Bible would call it, deception and lie. Not disinformation, just flat out lies. And so, so the wisdom of God gives us the ability to discern what is true, what is not true. We, we need to know. I, I, I want to know. Um, it, also, it also helps to give us understanding of, of a proverb or, or enigma. It, it, it's to give us understanding. There are, things, there are times when I read a proverb and I go, I don't, I don't know what in the world he's saying. I don't know what that, but, but as I get into the book of Proverbs, I find out that the book of Proverbs, how many know the word of God will interpret itself? It, 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 it interprets itself. And, and so how many, know, how many think that the Holy Spirit needs help interpreting what he said? He doesn't need it. He, 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 knows, he knows what he inspired the writers to write and he can give us understanding. And, um, uh, and then the last thing is uh, to help us with uh, the words, to give us uh, understanding of, of the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord, here's the point I want to make as we begin. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what it says here, knowledge. That word knowledge is not just a bunch of facts. It's not just a bunch of information. The fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. It's the beginning. If we don't get, if we don't get this, we, we, we can move no further in this realm of, of wisdom. We, we cannot get any further. How many think that God wants you full of the wisdom of God? He does. He wants you full of his, of his wisdom. And so he, he's given us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come alongside of us and to teach us all things, Scripture says, and, 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 and to bring wisdom um, to our life so that we can, we can be directed by the Holy Spirit. And so he is the Spirit of wisdom. That's, it. That's who he is. And so um, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you read, if you read the first part of this chapter 9, you'll see that it says that wisdom has built a, built a house. And there's seven pillars in this house. Let me just say this. When you build a house, what's the, what's the first thing that's got to be built? It's the foundation. So if... Using that analogy about wisdom building a house, if we're building a house of wisdom, if that's what we're building, those seven pillars, you've got to stand on something. So the beginning, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Those pillars stand on the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning place. The fear, the fear of the Lord. And some of you may be thinking, the fear of the Lord, we're supposed to be afraid of God, the, the fear of the Lord. No, but that's Old Testament. Well, let, let's, let's look at, Let's, let's just, I'm just going to go through these real quick. The fear of the Lord is mentioned all throughout Scripture. Old Testament, New Testament, it's all throughout Scripture. The fear of the Lord is something we need to walk in. We need to walk in the fear of the Lord. Look, look at what it says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. So just go down a, a, a few verses there. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. Then in Psalm 85, 9, it says, Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Proverbs, or Psalms 145, 19 says, He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. Psalm 147, 11. The, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Let's go to the New Testament, Acts chapter 9. Acts ch chapter 9, verse 31. Then the churches throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord... And in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. This is the early church. The early church walked in the fear of the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? What is that? What is that? How many, how many, how many have ever been fearful of something? How many has ever been speeding and um, you look in your rearview mirror and you're fearful of what you saw behind you? <laughs> And your heart starts pumping and you get really nervous. I, I, one time I, I, I got really nervous and... Um, and I was being followed by a policeman, and, and, uh, and I was like, oh. so I pull off to the side of the road, and I, um, he's, he's, I, I, what happened was I saw him do the loop around, and, and I was like, he got me. And so I, my heart's racing, I'm nervous, and, and, um, and so I pull to the side of the road, I get, uh, I, I get my, uh, my wallet out, I get my driver's license out, and then he goes, he goes flying past me and gets the guy in front of me. And I thought, oh, wow, that's awesome. I mean, oh. <laughs> Uh, so, but let me just say that hadn't always happened. There have been, there have been lots of times when I was the man that got stopped. Um, there have been times, I remember t one time uh, when I was a little kid, I jumped on my bed, and uh, I, this is probably one of the scariest uh, moments of my life. And, and I, jump, I jumped on my bed, and I rolled. Uh, you're going to think, that's the scariest moment of your life. You, you live, you live a, a very sheltered life. But I, I jumped on my bed, and when I did, I, I, I rolled across the bed, and I grabbed, I grabbed the blanket um, as, as I jumped on the bed, and as I did, that, that blanket wrapped around me like a cocoon. I fell off, uh, fell off the, the side of the bed, in between the bed and the wall, and I was stuck. 
I mean, I was like from head to toe was totally covered up. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I started, and I was like screaming. I didn't know if anybody could hear me. And I was, and I, I, I don't like cramped spaces to this day. I probably need freedom ministry. Um, but I, I struggle. I struggle. I struggle. I, I, um, that is true. How, I, I don't like cramped spaces. I, I, uh, I remember we went on a mission trip to Berlin and, um, and we went to visit. We did a tourist thing um, one of the days and, and, and they packed us all in this elevator. And it was like, it was like, I don't know how many people were packed in this. It was like a massive elevator and they just kept packing people in. I was at the back. And I was like, okay, this is, a, and, they, and, and, and in Germany, they don't always have air conditioners in buildings. And so it was like really hot and I couldn't breathe. And I was like, okay, we're, and they were like, we're, you know, there's just more people coming. I was like, no, we need to get this elevator moving because I need to get out of this elevator. And I was like, okay, I'm getting really uncomfortable. And I'm trying to maintain my peace for my boys because I, want them to, I don't want them to see their dad panic. But how many ever been in a situation where you're like, okay, Something's got to change because I'm, I'm about to die. And, and, and there's like this fear that wells up on the inside of you. And, and I mean, no fear. Fear's real. Sometimes there's things that like what we're fearing is not real, but the fear's real. Right? And, and so how many's ever had panic attacks? It was just, you're like, I don't know why this is happening, but the fear just overtakes you and overwhelms you for some f- crazy reason. I've, there have been times in my life I've had panic attacks. And, and so fear of the Lord is not, is not the same as a panic attack. Yeah. Okay, the fear of the Lord is not being af- a- a- afraid in that sense. And so we're going, to talk about, we're going to talk about what the fear of the Lord is. Go to 1 John chapter 4. So the fear, the, is, the Bible tells us, did, did y'all see all those times it tells us to fear the Lord? So we, we, we got we to gotta fear the Lord but, but what does that look like? I, our definition of fear, our definition of fear is often tied to something that's not fun. It, it, it's often tied to something that's crippling. Uh, I, I've been crippled by fear. I've been tormented. I've been tormented by fear. Look at what 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says. There is no fear in love. Okay, well, we're supposed to fear the Lord, but God is what? Love. Okay, we're supposed to fear the Lord, but there is no fear in love. And God is love. Okay, so, so this is John writing. There is no fear in love, but perfect, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves what? Torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. How many are glad he first loved us? Uh, I always say this, that our love for him is just the reciprocated love. It's, it's, it's a response to his love for us. We, did, we can't love him. We can't love him first. He loved us first. And so our love for him is, is a response to his goodness. I mean, how many know God is good? All the, yeah, that was it. Come on. God is good. Okay, All the time. All right, all right. Um, um, so the Apostle Paul, he, he, he writes this, this powerful truth that there's no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out fear. John, John I mean, John's extremely, he, the Apostle John was extremely close to Jesus. So Jesus had the, he had, he had, this, he had the 12, he had, he had more followers than the 12, but then he had the 12 guys that were really close to him. But out of the 12, he had three that were even closer than the, the, than the other 12. And then he had one who seems to be the closest. At least John believes that because John refers to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. Like he, he, was, he was, John was like, I'm, I'm special. I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. He referred to him, the disciple that Jesus, all throughout, all throughout his gospel. John, John is the one we find out that uh, when we read in scripture that leaned on Jesus. How many, how many, how many have, um, how many of you are, are, are touchy feely? How many of you are not? I, I, I personally have, um, like I have, I, I struggle. I, I, I've shared this with you before. This is probably another area of freedom I need to go through, but I have, I have, um, I have this, my personal space thing. Anybody relate? It's my per- you, you ever get around a close talker? 
and you're like this the whole time because they're invading your personal space. Um, I, I always say this, I don't, love, I don't love pets because they invade my personal space. It just, I, it's, just, it's just something I struggle with. I, I, and, and so, I, um, um, but some people are cuddlers, man. They, they, they just, they just, they want to hug all the time. When I got married, I wasn't a, I wasn't a big hugger. And I, and I remember, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm dating Lori and, and, um, you know, so we spend time with her, her family from time to time. And, um, uh, and her dad would just give me a bear hug, just hug me. And I'd be like, it just made me uncomfortable. I didn't. I was like the. I was like the side hugger. Anybody know what I'm talking? You're like the side hugger, especially like the Christian side hug at church, right? <laughs> and so I was kind of just like the side hugger. And um. And and, and then her brother would would reach and just hug me, and it, it just was like, oh, it's just awkward. I don't. Um. It's, I, st- I I struggle with. But wait, let me. John did. John was the hugger. John John was the apostle who was like he's the he's the he's the one who. Who, who, who wanted to lean on Jesus. He was the one that wanted to hang out with them. He, he, John was the close one. John, did you know that John, when, when Jesus was praying in the Garden of, of Gethsemane before he fell asleep, um, John, John penned the words he said. You know why? Because John was close enough to hear him. So John is, John is there, an eyewitness to the prayers that Jesus is praying. John is, John's a... Um, He's, I just want you to understand that John and Jesus were buddies. They were, they were buddies. But something happens. I mean, John saw Jesus perform all these miracles. He saw him heal the sick. He, he saw him feed the multitude. He saw him calm the storm by just speaking to it. John, John saw all those. John saw him raise the dead to life. John, John was a witness to that. John saw him crucified. John saw him after the resurrection. John saw him ascend into heaven. John was close, and he, he, he saw him on the, he was one of the three that got to see um, uh, Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. He got to see that, that event that nobody else saw but those three. John was extremely close to Jesus. He's on an island um, and, 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 and the Bible says he has a, he has a vision. And um, let me set this up, and then we're going to read this and, and, and turn to Revelation chapter 1. And we'll read it in just a second. So John has this vision. He's, he's caught up to heaven, and, and, and he has this vision of Jesus, his buddy. Remember, they're buddies. He, he's in the presence of of his friend, a guy who walked, he walked through life with for several years. And, and the guy who, the, the person who he's been proclaiming his message for all these years. And, and John has a vision of this Jesus and he's, he's encountering Jesus, his buddy. Um, how many have friends, like really close friends? And when you see them, if you haven't seen them in a long time, you hug them. You, right, you give him a high five. You, 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 whatever. You, you just. I guess that's probably a guy thing. Um, uh, but you, you know, you, you haven't seen him in a while, and you're excited to see him. Let me just, let me, as we read this, I want, I want you to think: Have you ever, with a friend that you haven't seen in a while, a buddy, a lifetime friend, um, one of your best friends, your closest friends? Let me, as we read this, I want you to ask yourself: uh, Was that ever your response when you saw them? So look what happens when John sees his buddy. Verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. So so he sees sees this Jesus, this glorified Jesus, this this judge, if you will. He sees Jesus, his friend, his buddy, and he falls down like a dead man. He almost passes out. He is... He is overwhelmed by his awesomeness. The one who he leaned on, the one who they had intimate conversation with and the the one who walked through and journeyed through life with him and mentoring him, he sees him again. And when he sees him, he is wowed by him. So more so than he ever has been before. He hits the floor like a dead man. 
But he, but he, uh, but he laid, listen, Jesus lays his right hand on me saying to me, what does he say? Do not be afraid. He, 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 don't be afraid. It's me. It's your buddy. It's Jesus. Don't be afraid. It's don't be afraid. Everybody say that. Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Let me just say, Jesus doesn't walk up and give him a chest bump. He doesn't give him a high five and he doesn't go, yo, G, what's up? He doesn't do that. He falls down like a dead man. Why? Because Jesus is awesome. He's awesome. He's always awesome. He's he's almighty. He has all power and all authority. He sits on the throne forever and ever and ever. He is the one who created heaven and earth. That's who he is. He knows all things. Omnipotent, omnipotent, omniscient. Omnipresent. This is this is this is this is God standing before him, and he responds in the way that you would respond to someone so great. You honor them and respect them, and you're in awe of who they are. You're in awe of their greatness. The fear of the Lord, I think it's interesting. Jesus says, Don't be afraid. Did you know that all throughout Scripture, God would have encounters with man, and, or he'd send angels to be, uh, to be messengers, and one of the first things they would say would be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The fear of the Lord is not, a, is not, is not telling us to be afraid of him. Fear, that kind of fear will keep us from him. How many know God is approachable? God's approachable. Let me give you an example. The children of Israel... <laughs> heard God speak. And Moses is excited. Moses is hearing the same thing they're hearing. And they're seeing all this thunder and lightning. And, and Moses is like, isn't this awesome? And the children of Israel said, Moses, you go talk to God and you come tell us what he says. Well, we ain't going up on that mountain. We're not going to, you know why, you know why, you know why God was approachable even then. Moses approached him. Moses approached him. Now, there were, there were certain things that Moses couldn't do that we have access to today, which is awesome, right? The veil's been rent in two, and we have access boldly, the scripture says. We boldly can approach this. God is approachable. How many's ever, how many's ever had a relationship with someone like maybe a father or, or, or grandfather or someone like that who was unapproachable? They were unapproachable. And you never knew, you never knew if they were going to fly off the handle or if they would be nice. And you struggled, you struggled to ask them things because sometimes the response was, a lot of times the response was always no, before they even thought about it. And you struggled to approach them. And you never knew what kind of mood they were going to be in that day. If if they didn't have a good day at work, you had no idea how 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 to how to how to approach them. Sometimes you just you just you just went to your room. Let me just say, God's not like that kind of, he's not like that kind of a daddy. That's not who, that's not who he is. This fear of the Lord, this fear, fearing the Lord is not saying to us, be afraid, be very afraid. That's not, that's not what it's saying. It's saying, be in awe of him. He's daddy, but don't ever forget, he's God. Don't ever forget that. He has, he has given us access we, he, he, is, he ripped the veil, you know, the veil ripped when Jesus died. I, I see God like, I see God doing it himself. Like God saying, I hate this veil. I hate it. I want my people to be able to approach me and to come into my presence. So how do we, how do we navigate through? How, so if that's the beginning, if that's the beginning, if that's the beginning it was, the scripture says this, you don't have to turn here, but Jesus was, was talking to his disciples and this is, this is what he says. He, says. he says, no longer do I call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you, listen, I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. That's in John, John 15. 
I don't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master's up to. But I call you friends and I'm going to share with you. I, I, want to say, I wanted to say this because I want you to understand that the relationship that Jesus had with John hadn't changed. It hadn't changed. You know how I know it hadn't changed? Because Jesus was about to reveal to his friend, his buddy, what he was doing. That's what Revelation's all about. It's about Jesus. It's the revelation of Jesus to John. It is, it is Jesus revealing to John what it is that his, what John's master is up to, what his friend is up to. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to share this with you because you're my friend and you need to know what's going on. And not only, not only am I telling it to you, I want you to write it down because I got some other friends who need to know what I'm up to. Because those who have relationship with me, I don't hide stuff from them. I reveal it to them. So the relationship between Jesus and John has not changed. They're still buddies. But even though they're buddies, John is still in awe of this Jesus. He, is, he falls down. He falls down flat on his face because he's in awe of who he is. We have a culture in, in, a, in, our, in our world today that, um, that's kind of lost its, it's, it's lost its way. And, it, and it's, how many, how many, how many, as you walk through this life, you think, where is the fear of the Lord? Where is the awe and respect for who he is? I see people cracking jokes and not, not, listen, I'm a, you know, if I wasn't a pastor, um, I often say this, Lori's like, I'm glad you chose to be a pastor. I often say, I think I might've tried to be a comedian. I like to make people laugh. But there, so how many know that there's stuff in our culture that's like, where, where God is, is, is the, it's the punchline of jokes. It, it, our, our culture has lost its way. And, and so God wants us to understand that the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom is the, the fear of the Lord. It's understanding that he is God Almighty. He is a great God. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He is all powerful. He speaks and galaxies come into existence. They're born. When he speaks, mountains tremble. When he speaks, raging storms, they're calmed. When he speaks, the sick are healed. When he speaks, the blind can see. When he speaks, the lame can walk. When he speaks, those that are dead come alive. That's the God we serve. He is still God. He is still awesome. He's never lost that, ever. There is nothing our God cannot do. Do, and I know that's a double negative, and English teachers don't like that, but that is the truth. There is nothing God cannot do. We used to sing a song in, in children's church. Y'all remember it? My God is so good, right? So, so, so great, so good and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. And then we grow up and we get tame. Our faith becomes tame. Because, because God begins to shrink. And the Bible says that we're to magnify him. And the God that we, we believed could do anything when we were kids, we grow up and we don't believe that anymore. Oh, we may say it, but the fact that we worry and have anxiety over things that God, God can take care of for us shows us what we believe. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I could believe God could do anything. Anything. I, listen, the Dallas Cowboys, I know, I know, I know, I know. But listen, listen to me. There was supernatural power. When I was a kid, I prayed for them. I don't pray for them anymore. Actually, I pray, God, keep them out of jail. That's what I pray now. I say, God, save them. <laughs> I always say every year they're going to be the best team in prison. Uh, this is crazy. It's, 
It's like every, every it seems like every other week there's one of them in trouble. Uh, it's crazy. And I, I never get it. One of them, what, a couple years ago, broke a millionaire. A guy make millions of dollars. Uh, stole underwear out of a store. I'm thinking, what is the deal? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen with those other teams. This is crazy. But I remember, and I, my childlike faith just believed that if I prayed, it would, it would help Roger Staubach beat Terry Bradshaw. It got really quiet in that corner over there. <laughs> no, I just believed. I believe. And here's the point I want to make. As we grow up, as we grow up, our faith gets tamed. And we don't believe like we did. Why? Because we're grown up now. We think different. And God's no different. He's no different. I mean, maybe he doesn't help the Cowboys win. Obviously, he's not helping them right now. But, but, okay, maybe that, but listen, if you believe God can do anything, if you believe that God can do anything, you're in line with Scripture. For with man, things are impossible. With God, nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. Our, I always think when you're in a difficult situation in life, that is an opportunity for a testimony. We get bent out of shape. Oh, why isn't God doing something? Why isn't God doing I don't know why he hasn't done it yet. He's gonna. God's gonna. That's Texas. That's te- God's gonna. God's gonna do something. Wait. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait. We, we're always in a hurry. We're, and God's timing's not like our timing. And we're like, God, okay, electricity's about to turn, get turned off. God, you're going to show up. Zone. Okay, God, they're coming like today. <laughs> Listen, God's, God's power has not changed. He's, still, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a great God. Let's never forget that. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. It's, it's the awe. It's the awe of God. It's understanding that he's still the God who created the heavens and the earth. He's still the God that spun, spun all the planets into orbit and, and, and gave birth to all the galaxies, the ones that we've seen and ones we will never see. That's who he is. That's who he is. So what is it that you got to, you're struggling with today? You serve an awesome God. He's an awesome God. We have to determine. I want to go back as, as I get ready to close. Acts chapter 9. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to show you this in Acts chapter 9. Just go back to this, this verse about the early church. How many know the early church saw the power of God move? Man, all throughout Acts, how many, how many, when you read, we were at a church one time and, and, um, and you know, uh, we were, we were talking about a name change for the church. And one of the, one of the people said, this is what, one of the suggestions that he said for the, a new name for the church. And he said, and this is what he said. He said, church of Acts revisited. And everybody was like, yeah, no, nah, that's not going to work. Um, well, let me just say this. The concept, how many think the concept's good? The concept's good. Um, how many know the church? We need to be the church of Acts revisited. We, we need to see God move in the way that God did in the early church. And if we want to see that, then we have to look at what, what did. Yeah, I remember when we, when we were starting this church, I was playing golf with this guy who went to this big church. He was, he was like on staff at this mega church. And, um, and uh, I was playing with a friend. I teamed up with this guy. We, we just was, I was going to say by chance, but I guess it's probably divine. Um, and, and so we're, we're teeing off with this guy and I'm, I'm um, uh, in conversation with him and, and, um, and we, were, we were planting the church. We were, and he said, well, what model are you, what, what model are you using? And I said, well, help me. What, what model am I using? Help me. He goes, well, you're using the seeker friendly model. You're using the, and he throws out all these models and I go, oh, I was just going to use the Church of Acts. I was just, I just wanted to use the Church of Acts as the model. Like, how many know that, that God started the church the way he wanted it? Yeah. Okay. So, so when he gave birth to the church, that's the way he wanted the church. And so that, that was, I was like, that, 
And he was like, oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. And um, he didn't say a whole lot to me the rest of the time about Bible things. But, but I, I, just, I just, that blew, I was like, I don't know, what are you, what are you asking me, what model? I don't, not, I don't know. I, you know. If you could ask me what kind of model, okay, the, the Lakewood model seems to be, a lot of people come. That seems good. I mean, I don't, I just want God to show up. Yeah. I want just want God to do what God wants to do. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about models. I just want God to show up. Yeah. I look at the book of Acts and I think, so that's what I want. I want when we, at the end of the service, when we pray for the sick, I want them to get healed. Yeah. I just, I just want them to get healed. I, I want when we have an altar call at the end of the service that, that God adds to our numbers daily. I'm yelling, but I'm just saying, I just, I just want that. I want the Holy Spirit to come in power and might. Yeah. I, want, I, want, I want from our bellies to flow rivers of living water that changes the world around us. That's what I want to see. And I see that in the book of Acts, and I, and I, look, at, I look at them, and then it says this. It says, then the church. It's, how many think that the description of the church in Acts gives us clues? So then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. And in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. It was growing. God was growing the church. Why? Because, because they were walking in the fear of the Lord. They never lost sight that God is awesome. Doesn't mean that you come to church and you're like, yes, Amen. No one talk, no one laugh. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. It means that we never forget that the God we serve is awesome. The earth or the heaven, the, the heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. That's how big and awesome our God is. He created the world with the words he spoke, and it's sustained by him. We don't have to, we don't have to worry. Now, I, I, listen, I think we should be good stewards of the earth. I, I, I do. And if you want to hug a tree, go hug one. I, that's okay. I mean, you know, come hug, come hug the one in, the back, in my backyard that's dead, the big pine tree. That's, come hug it, and maybe you can heal it. I don't know. But, but I, listen, it, it's okay. The world that we live in is not going to be overrun by plastic and baby diapers because God's not smart enough to create the earth to last as long as he said it's going to last. It's going to end the way he wrote it. He wrote the script. It's going to end the way he said it. And we, we do our part, but let's that, just, that's just, that's just, God's awesome. And this, this earth remains because God says for it to remain. And in the day when it's, it's time to, to, to rebuild some things, then God's going to come and he's going to send his son and things are going to get reworked. But until that time, until that time, things are going to, this is what, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Whether it gets warmer or colder, whether there's climate change, he said, until the end, there will be what? Seed time and harvest. Whether there will be seasons. So it's going to happen. So we rest in his word. We know, we have confidence that our God is able. God is awesome. And he's not, he didn't create something he can't hold together. Now we create things we can't hold together, right? How many put things on your calendar and you can't hold it together? You, you, you just, you can't hold it. That's us. God's not like us. God's not like us. We have to determine, though, we have to determine that we're going to walk in the fear of the Lord. We live in a culture that's lost its way. Listen, we don't respect the president anymore. We, we don't. I, I think one of the most detrimental things in, in our society today is a 24-hour news cycle where they got to come up with some type of news because they don't have any. And, and, and so they just... And so we got cameras everywhere. Listen, listen, we don't respect anything. 
We don't honor our culture. Now, maybe you do, but our culture as a whole, we don't honor people in authority anymore. We don't. We, 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 I, was, I was watching, I don't know if anybody saw the tennis match uh, last night with, with the great, probably the greatest woman uh, tennis player in the history of the world um, laid into the ref, just laid into him and got mad because he, he, uh, he penalized her. And it just, just made her that much more mad. We, athletes scream and holler at refs, even though they're the boss. On the field, they're the boss. They, they scream at them all the time and holler at them. We, we got people who don't respect policemen, guys who are risking their lives. We got people who don't, who, don't, who don't respect and honor those who have fought for our country and given us the, our culture. Our culture's gone crazy. And so we, we have this, we're fighting, and that's crept into the church where we don't honor and respect anything. It is important for us not to buy in to that philosophy and that mindset because what it does is it leads to this minimizing who God is. I, you know what model I want for the church? is God's model. Why? Because he's, Jesus is the head of the church. So why would I not go to him and say, you're, you're the boss. Show me what to do. Why? Because you're Jesus. And I honor and respect who you are and what you bring to the table. You the boss, I ain't. You are God, I'm not. I love the scriptures that Roy read this morning that his mercy endures forever because the reality is God is so awesome. He's so big, he's so strong, he's so mighty. He could have just went and blown us off the planet. It's just been done. It's just been done. You know what? Bad, bad experiment. Be done away. People say that Jesus, the scripture says Jesus could have called, what, a legion of, of, of angels to save him. No, he, he didn't have to. He could, have, he could have spoke. Did you know that when they arrested him in the garden, he spoke and they fell down? He, they fell down. Why? Because he's awesome. I don't know about you, I, I, even with bad breath, I, I, I've never spoken. People fell down before me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> never! But Jesus speaks and people fell down because he's awesome. I'm done. Never forget God's awesome. I'm going to ask the worship team to come in. They're going to lead us in that last song again. We serve a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. So I don't know where you're at today, but as the worship team's coming, I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're dealing with in your life, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Some of you are facing some circumstances and decisions. You don't, you don't know, I man, I need wisdom. Here's the, here's the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Inquire of the Lord. I don't, I don't know about you. I don't fear my wife. I don't fear her. I don't, I'm not afraid of my wife. But one thing I'm, one thing I'm fearful of, this is, and, and it's a healthy fear. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, here's what, I'm fearful, I'm fearful that I'll do things that don't please my wife because I love her. That's why, I, that's why I put the seat down on the toilet. That's why I do it. I don't do it because I have to do it. I do it, I do it because I'm thinking of her. I have a relationship with the creator of the universe. A, a God who sent his son to die for me. A God who loved me at my worst. A God who saw me at the worst place I could be, and he loved me anyway. A God who could have thumped me off the planet, but loved me instead. A God who could have seen me in my mess and just ignored me and turned his back and seen me uh, condemned to hell. That's not who he is. My God has been good to me. I don't, know about, I don't know about you, but God's been good to me. And there may be things in your life and you have questions. You don't know what's going on. And you're thinking, God, I don't know what's going on. I need wisdom. I need understanding. But, but in spite of it right now, I still believe that you are able and you're awesome. I believe that you are who you've always been. You are the same today as you were in the days of, of the Old Testament saints. You're the same today. God, you are, you're the same one that spoke and light existed. You're the same one that took a pile of dirt and breathed into it and it came alive. You're the same God. You have never lost your awesomeness. 
So wherever you're at today, I want you to consider this fact, this truth. God is awesome. God's awesome. And the awesome God is on your side. He's for you. He's not against you. He's working where you may not see him working. He's working. He's working. And you're, you want it right now. You, it's like you ordered something at McDonald's and they didn't get it to you in time and you're upset. And God's saying, just wait. Do you trust me or not? Just, just wait. I'm working out some details, but you're going to have to wait. You're going to sit there and wait. As they lead us in this song, I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet. As they lead us in this song, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're facing in your life, can we get our eyes off of that thing for just a moment? Just get your eyes off of it. Get your eyes off of that. And right now, let's get our eyes on the greatness of who God is. So we sing this song. Let's, let's sing this song with our perspective a little different. God, you're great. I, yeah, I got problems. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn my eyes off of those for a second. And I'm going to concentrate on the greatness of God. Can we do that? Go ahead and let's listen to this song real quick.